Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco X3, also known as the Wayu and Bhima. Now recently, there was a lot of noise about these devices breaking and stuff, but that doesn't stop us from trying different custom ROMs. And now that most of the custom ROMs are based on the MIUI 12 firmware, you should not really worry about breaking your device. So today, we are talking about Cherish OS based on Android 12. I've installed it, I've ran the benchmarks, I've spoken to a few people who have used it, and I have a 24-hour initial review ready for you. So before we get into the details, if you like what you see every single day, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us. If you like chatting with like-minded people who have similar devices and try different custom ROMs, join us on Telegram, join us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are all over the place in social media and we are active every where last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going all right so let's see what team experience has to say first so let's go to experience os or let's go to x3 pro updates over here real quick so x3 pro updates right and as you can see there are different roms that are available and one of them is experience os so this is experience official rom s that is for android s oss vendor yu and bima version 16 official right it's updated on the 29th of october 2021 now the device changelog says initial android 12 public release advanced reboot options add unlinked ringtone and notification volumes add preference for maximum screen refresh rate add three finger swipe screenshots so i'll have to enable that bug fixes now this ships with g apps and as i said the recommended firmware is 12.0.4 or higher SE Linux status is enforcing and safety net passes out of the box. So all that sounds pretty, pretty amazing, right? Now let's increase the brightness here a little bit. Okay, now let's go to settings over here. And the first thing that I'd like to notice is the refresh rate because that's what matters. Now, as you can see over here, we are on 60 to 120. So that's all fine and good. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that you have a very colorful and beautiful wallpaper over here. Very, very minimalistic ap approach. It does have customization. Now, with Android 12 custom ROMs, we are in a situation wherein things are getting better. Now, as far as Android 12 ROMs are concerned, we are in a situation wherein they have started getting a lot of customization and soon things will be better, smoother, more stable, and we will be able to differentiate between custom ROMs because initially all the Android 12 based custom ROMs were looking pretty vanilla and pretty, pretty basic. So what do we have here? Very, very basic icons. This ships with Gcam Go, which is always a good thing compared to the very basic camera application. And yes, it works absolutely fine. The app icon animations are pretty rock solid, pretty smooth and pretty subtle, right? We will talk about the multitasking menu here, but to the left, you have Google feed. Now, as always, this is the highlight. The Google feed is butter smooth and it works as expected. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you will see that you have the quick tiles the Android 12 Monet UI doing its job. You have the edit button, you have the power menu over here, and then you have the settings shortcut, right? And everything works fine. So the reason I said everything works fine is because initially on Android 12 ROMs, what used to happen is the settings shortcut, if you access it from the quick tiles or the notification bar, you will see that it used to stutter earlier. Right now, it is not stuttering for me, which is a good start. Okay, now you have a ton of quick tiles available over here, screencast, screen recording. Now this is a common problem across all the Android 12 based ROMs for the Poco X3 Pro. Whenever you're using the built-in screen recorder, the UI tends to lag and jitter. Now I'm trying to find that out right now. Yes, it is stuttering. I'm pretty sure they will fix it soon, but right now it is stuttering. So I would recommend you to use a third party screen recorder if you really, really wish to use screen recording, right? Now moving on, let's, let's have a look at the screen recording. I'm pretty sure it was stuttery, but yeah. Okay, so the screen recording is stuttery and I'm pretty sure that will be fixed soon. You have additional options over here. You have your privacy shortcuts for blocking the camera, mic and location access. Then you have caffeine, something that keeps your screen on, 
right so if you are on a 15 second screen timeout and you enable caffeine your screen will continue to stay on you have ambient display uh yeah don't use always on display right because this is a device with a lcd panel and you will lose out on a bunch of battery life now that's everything about the quick settings or the notification tiles now if you go over here you have home settings in which you have the quick step launcher if i'm not wrong and step by step it is getting customization on android 12 right now it doesn't have a ton of customization but things are increasing and things will be better in the near future now if you go to widgets you have very very smooth android 12-esque widgets which work absolutely fine and apart from this if you go to wallpaper and style you have the option of themed icons as you can see over here right so i selected themed icons but for some reason themed icons are not working and if you click on change wallpaper and select a wallpaper of your choice the whole ui basically changes color so let's go to wallpaper and style let's go to change wallpaper and let's set this wallpaper again as you can see yeah for some reason themed icons are not working that's a little weird but hey that's not a big problem i'm pretty sure it will be fixed later now if you talk about the app drawer you have a very very basic app drawer with the search apps option at the top and you don't really have a ton of applications that is the highlight of most of the custom roms because that's what makes sure that you don't really get a slow experience or a stuttery experience by not having a lot of bloatware now let's go to settings over here and if you go to system you do have an option of system ui tuner over here so as you can see status bar you can enable or disable icons and as you can see over here show low priority notification as well then you have a shortcut for do not disturb navigation bar and lock screen so these are some basic customization options which are increasing with time as i said now if you go to about phone and you go to the android version you have android version 12 you do have the experience logo over here right and then the security patch is october security patch and it's an official rom the kernel that we are talking about is the yuki iridium kernel that is supplied now over here it says se linux permissive i think it is because of safety net because it is mentioned that se linux is enforcing in the rom description right now one small stutter or small issue that i noticed over here sometimes when i am on some screen wherein i'm going ahead and you know trying to swipe up or swipe down it stutters for a second see yeah it doesn't register the first scroll up that's really really weird i'm pretty sure they will fix it and if you actually go to the multitasking menu you will see that it is butter smooth it is really really smooth you have clear all and then you have the screenshot option over here Right now, what I want to see here is, do we get the expanded screenshot? So let's go here. And I've not enabled three fingers. So yeah, you do have the option of capture more with this magnifying look over here, which is really, really neat. And it works absolutely fine. So now in settings, you know, network and internet, mobile, hotspot, Wi-Fi, all these basic things are working just as expected. They are very, very standard things. It doesn't make any sense in covering them again and again. So if you actually go to battery, you have something called as thermal profiles over here, right? I've set the thermal profiles. And for gaming, you do have the 180 hertz touch sampling rate. Activate manual touch screen feature controls for better gaming experience. So you have that feature and that's good. And you have thermal profiles for different, different, you know, applications, benchmark, camera, gaming, all these options are present now i have ran the benchmarks i won't say that i'm mighty impressed or this is you know the highest scoring rom and stuff like that but it's doing a pretty pretty decent job as far as the battery life and you know charging are concerned they are just fine just have a look over here so if you go to battery usage now this gap that you see here is because the phone was switched off when i had gone out but yes as you can see one hour and 14 minutes you still have 43 percent battery so the battery life is pretty decent now apart from this the charging speeds are okay let's talk about safety net over here right so let's go ahead and test safety net real quick safety net passes just fine let's go to the play store and let's talk about the play store certification device is certified and what about drm info l1 certification present so your yeah, amazon prime should be playing in hd and you should not have any problems at all 
So the basic areas are covered. You have a decent camera application. This ROM charge is fine. The battery backup is there. There are some minor hiccups, some minor bugs here and there. Now let's you know go ahead and quickly have a look at the benchmark numbers for experience log. So first we will look at the CPU throttle test for which we will need the screenshot. Now, this is a screenshot as you can see over here, CPU throttled to 83% of its max performance and the average score was 184206 GIPS. And if you go to Geekbench, now in Geekbench, the score was single core 771 and multi core 2703. So pretty rock solid score there. And if you talk about Antutu benchmark over here, as you can see, it dropped 3% battery, the temperature went up by 5 degrees and the score was 552,041. So overall decent benchmark numbers, good charging speeds, good battery backup and overall you will not have any problems using this ROM as a daily driver. I've not tested gaming. If you're a gamer, you can definitely install this ROM. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video on how to install this ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.